Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is going to hell. No, no, that seems like a very strong statement to make, but it's one that I have to make because Jordan Peterson is not a Christian and only the Lord Jesus Christ can save us from our sins and get us to heaven. The Bible says in John's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 18, whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now the question in this video is, what does Jordan Peterson believe? Now there's a certain process which I've seen happen before whereby celebrities can sometimes be misidentified as Christians for various reasons. And this seems to have happened to Jordan Peterson as well. Let me actually start by saying I have great respect for Jordan Peterson. And if you're listening to this, Jordan, um, my heart's desire, I'm sure our heart's desire for you is that you would find Jesus Christ. You'd find who he is. You'd find the salvation that comes through him. He's a living person, a real person, and he's near at hand to those who call on him. But there's a process which can happen whereby Christians end up believing that somebody is a Christian when they're not. For example, the person might be asked to talk about their belief in God on some TV programme or something like that, and they do. And then the rumour goes around very quickly that so-and-so believes in God. And then the next thing is they say something about Jesus, about the Lord Jesus Christ, and the rumour goes around they become a Christian, and very soon everybody's saying, this person is a Christian. And that seems to be what happened with Jordan Peterson. He's certainly spoken about his understanding of God, and he's certainly spoken about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's clear that he's a man who reads the Bible. And it's clear as well that he does have some convictions. I would think I would call him an agnostic from what he's said. But the rumour soon goes around that the man is a Christian, or maybe he's nearly a Christian, or almost a Christian. But we can find out a lot about what Jordan Peterson's theology is by studying his videos, many of which are put up on YouTube, and I myself have enjoyed watching quite a few of them. Some of them are outstanding, in my opinion, such as the one that he did recently, I think it was the 26th of June, on surgeons and psychologists being butchers who should be in prison. He's talking about surgeons who are performing surgery to remove breasts on young women uh, for the purposes of changing sex. It's clear that Mr. Peterson is fulminantly against this. Now he's, So he's gone as far as calling those surgeons butchers. Now, I would like to say that too, and I agree with him, but I can't say it because I might get into trouble with the GMC. Mr. Mr. Peterson, therefore, is a man of some conviction and fervent conviction in defending what he believes, and I agree with him, are issues relating to the well-being of young people uh, very important issues, very pertinent issues, very significant issues in our time. Another video which is well worth watching is a video put up just a few days ago about his banning, being banned from Twitter and the reasons for that. And I commend it to you. So Jordan Peterson has done a lot of good things. And for example, he has been uh, attributed to be the first person to significantly speak up on the subject of transgender pronouns. So that for somebody in my situation where I have a legal case relating to those pronouns, this has been extremely helpful. And I, of course, thank God for that. I'm not going to be a sourpuss or anything of that sort, but no way. Um, I thank God for that. There is a significant difference in the, in the past. Mr. Peterson has said that he would use transgender pronouns in order to be polite and to be kind. Whereas I've said, I won't use them in order to be polite and to be kind. If we use transgender pronouns, we buy into transgender ideology and we empower those who are prom promoting transgender ideology amongst children. So we must not use trans that abortion is wrong. Mr. Peterson has call for a return of manhood and has spoken very much on the importance of strong masculine uh, lives in our young men and this is very much to be welcomed. 
In fact, so much so that he tells us that many people call him their father. Now, this isn't outlandish in so much as we have a crisis of fatherhood in our Western culture. Last week, I was at a meeting of various Christian um, pre preachers, and it was said from the front that pastors have to be aware that people need father figures because people need a father and people are lacking a father and feeling that void and feeling that ache. Now, most people who were perhaps in Mr. Peterson's position would be tempted to start their own cult with them as the father figure. And I don't see any evidence of that in Mr. Peterson. I think that's very commendable. And um, yet people are looking for something. They're empty. There's a void. And this teaching of from Mr. Peterson's psychology is that as um, a father figure, he is encouraging them through his own particular psychology that he has studied, that he's an expert in, that he knows. So there are many good things about Jordan Peterson, but his beliefs, his philosophy, his worldview, his psychology isn't Christian. And I hope to show that just now in just a few um, episode, episodes, excerpts from videos, just to show what Mr. Peterson's theology is. Now, he's not a theologian, he's not a minister, he's not a pastor, he's never claimed to be such a thing. He's not a church leader. I don't think he's claimed to be a Christian. And so there's no blame. He's not misleading people. He's quite frank and open about what he does or doesn't believe, what he's not sure of and what's not clear to him. But I do want to show that, that, that Mr. Peterson has not believed the gospel, has not turned to Jesus Christ, and is therefore not a Christian, and therefore not saved, and therefore going to hell, because only Jesus Christ and his blood can save us and deliver us from the wrath to come. And so with Jordan Peterson, we have somebody whose worldview clearly is based upon his psychological training, his beliefs about psychology, his worldview, which I believe is uh, humanistic, uh, and his um, understanding of the Bible is affected by these beliefs as well. Now, the problem with this psychology, and of course there are many people who are following Jordan Peterson and his psychology, is that sooner or later it hits the buffers and it hits the buffers because it fails to describe man as he is. We'll go on to describe Jordan Peterson's doctrine of sin, uh, or understanding of the doctrine of sin uh, shortly. But this psychological worldview, which has man at the centre of the world, which sees us as uh, beings in and of ourselves, but not directly accountable to God, directly answerable to him, and doesn't see our knowledge of God depending upon revelation as such, is something which affects the teaching that he gives to people. And as I've said, sooner or later it hits the buffers because it doesn't go deep enough as to who we are as uh, people, as humankind, as men and women made in the image of God, as sinners in need of salvation. And as a worldview, it is an alternative worldview to the gospel and to the Bible. And we need to remember that there's a sort of tendency that psychology can do no wrong. Well, nobody, I think, has been more critical of psychology than, than Jordan Peterson. But he himself has adopted that worldview, um, a psychology worldview, which um, tells us that, uh, that uh, all our problems are within and need to be solved uh, from, from within ourselves, not from an external um, eternal God and creator whom we can know personally. So we need to bear that in mind. We need to bear in mind that this is an alternative worldview that is being taught by Jordan Peterson. We need to bear in mind that it isn't consistent with what the Bible teaches us. And I believe the Bible is better. And I believe the Bible is correct. And I believe the Bible uh, supplies what we need far more accurately and far more in far more depth and far more permanence um, than the uh, psychology, any psychology could so we need to remember this. this. This is psychology that begins with the assumption that uh, mankind is complete in himself. This is psychology that is materialistic. This is a psychology that is humanistic and that puts man at the centre of the universe. And it's not consistent with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We may agree that abortion is wrong. We may agree that transgender pronouns are a bad thing. We may agree that men need strong father figures in their lives. 
you may agree that it's good for men to be masculine and to manifest that in a in a controlled way but having agreed on that if we've come from a different worldview a different foundation then we could almost call modern psychology another gospel and um, another doctrine which is alien to the doctrine of the bible now as we consider the the theology of um of jordan peterson i want to consider this that when we approach the bible we have to do so correctly and we are told that the bible is the word of god that it's god's god breathed that it's inspired this is a holy book this is the book of god this is the word of god consisting of the old and new testaments but not the apocrypha this is a book that we can't come to with our preconceptions or our worldly uh, philosophies uh, and judge it by by them but one of the difficulties i think that mr mr peterson has is that when he comes to the bible he comes with his psychology and he has read the bible that's good uh, and would encourage anybody to read the bible but he has interpreted it it seems in the framework of his own psychology you will never understand the bible if you interpret it in the framework of your own psychology now we've said that jordan peterson some people say that he's a christian some people say that he's a man who um has uh, has professed the christian faith i don't think that's the case and i think that jordan peterson himself uh, would almost certainly agree with that um, i don't think he would have a problem with that but one of the things about this is supposing he did become a christian what would what would actually happen in biblical terms well, there would have to be a humbling, wouldn't there? This is what's happened to all of us who become Christians. We can't come and say, because I am a king or a ruler, um, therefore I can come in my pomp and in my majesty before the throne of God. Jesus said, unless we accept the kingdom of God like a little child, we can't enter in. And we must come in total surrender. Our learning is not of value when it comes to entering the kingdom of God. Any money we have, any wisdom we have in this world is not counted because Jesus Christ is our saviour and the cross of Christ is a stumbling block to those who cannot believe it. So if Jordan Peterson is to become a Christian, he must come by the route of repentance from sin and in total surrender. And that's humbling to a man. It puts away our worldly wisdom. And it means that you cannot bring your psychology with you into the kingdom of God. The second thing is this, and that is that if Jordan Peterson were to become a Christian, and I pray that by God's grace he would, because that's the most wonderful thing that can happen to a man or a woman or a child, to become a Christian, to know Jesus Christ as your saviour from sin. But if he became a Christian, the world would almost certainly treat him as if he had immediately become an expert on Bible theology, and that doesn't happen overnight. When we become Christians, we have a testimony. We know that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. We know that our sins are forgiven, but it takes a long, long time to, to, to really become strong and mature in, Bi in the Bible theology. But the world always thinks that if a celebrity becomes a Christian, they're an instant expert on the Christian faith. So it would be a change of direction. It would be a complete change of direction in Mr. Peterson's life. Just as the gospel has been a complete change of direction in any one of our lives who has become a Christian because Jesus turns us around. He humbles us into the dust because of our sins and because of our powerlessness and because of our helplessness. So Mr. Mr. Peterson is um, looking at the Bible in these excerpts and he is interpreting it through the lens of his own worldview, of his own psychology. And you will never understand the Bible if you do that. These worldviews can't be uh, reconciled. The Bible has its own mode of being interpreted, and that is how we must approach the Word of God. Even so, we encourage people to read the Bible for themselves and to believe what it says. Now, very helpfully, Mr. Peterson has recently put up a video on his YouTube page entitled, Do I Believe in God? Uh, what is the meaning of the question? And I recommend that you listen to that if you want to understand what Mr. Peterson's view of God is. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. That was the great theme of um, the preaching of the evangelist Brownlow North in the 19th century, that 
God has revealed to us in the Bible his person, his nature, his work. God has revealed to us in Jesus Christ so that Jesus said, he that has seen me um, has seen the Father uh, and uh, the Lord Jesus himself being God the Son. But when we come to what Jordan Peterson believes about God, we find him not believing in the God of the Bible and not believing in a God who is imminent, that means very near to us, um, someone whom we can call on because he's near at hand, who is intimately connected with our day-to-day -day lives, but a, a spirit being who may or may not exist, a spirit being who is somewhere out there that we may or may not be able to connect with or communicate with, a spirit being whom we can't really understand, a spirit being who is who is God, but um, we don't really know what that means. That's how I would summarize Jordan Peterson's discussion on the person of and the nature of God himself. Certainly Mr. Peterson hasn't said anything about God being a holy trinity. And then there's this clip as well, which uh, gives us insight into his understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, remember that he is coming to the Bible through the lens of a psychological um, philosophy. So uh, let's just uh, look at this clip just now. Rich, at this point, please insert the first clip. Now in this clip, uh, Mr. Peterson is talking about the incident where the rich young ruler came to speak to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and he referred to the Lord Jesus as good teacher. Now, John Peterson has misquoted this. He says, Jesus said, don't call me good. But in fact, it says, uh, why do you call me good? Jesus is good. It's certainly right to call him good. The question wasn't whether Jesus was good. The question was whether the rich young ruler understood what he was saying when he asked Jesus if he was good. But Mr. Peterson goes on to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ as if he were not God, but had something of God in him and that he could improve himself and that he could become more like God with um, the right input, presumably psychology. And he extends that to uh, us, that whereas we're not as great as Jesus Christ and we don't have as much of that spark in us as the Lord Jesus Christ did, he sets an example for us so that we can also follow and improve ourselves. Now, this sounds to me very much like ancient Gnosticism. It sounds to me very much like the idea that the Lord Jesus Christ is not, in fact, God, but is a created being, is a demigod, a little god who has been sent into the world by um, a, a god who cannot be known, a god who is distant over the horizon somewhere where we can't understand him, know him or interact with him in any way. Now, I don't know whether Mr. Peterson is consciously aware of this or not, but the Lord Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords, and we are not like him. He is divine, and we, not, we are not. He is God and man, and we are not. And we need to be cleansed from our sins through his blood. So Mr. Peterson's understanding of God is not a biblical understanding of God, even though he does read the Bible, and even though he does um, uh, look at the scriptures. Yet his, uh, his way of looking and reading into the scriptures is affected by his psychology. And so I want to move on now. Now on the 1st of July, a video was released by the Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's organization, in which there was an interview between Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson, in which they discussed God and belief in God. Now, um, also, Ben Shapiro uh, announced that from now on, there were, uh, Ben Jordan Peterson would be working for the Daily Wire. Now, Jordan Peterson is a man, as I've already said, that I respect him for the way in which he has stood up for the need for um, masculinity in society and father figures. Uh, ben Shapiro isn't a Christian either but he's clearly a man who has tackled some very serious issues head on and both of them have brilliant minds and have proven themselves in the heat of battle to be able to answer very tricky questions. Um, so uh, we could just hope that both of them somehow would find the Lord Jesus Christ to be their saviour. Um, but uh, this is a discussion between the two of them and uh, in this discussion um, Jordan Peterson talks about creation and how God created the world. Rich, please could you put the second clip in at this point? So we see here that Jordan Peterson sees God as a spirit who created all things out of what was pre-existent, um, a potential of chaos, and uh, that God made the habitable order out of the potential of chaos. 
And if we are saying that about God, then he isn't the God of the Bible. God of the Bible made all things out of nothing. He made all things. There was nothing that he that was made that was not made um, by God, by God, through Jesus Christ, his son, who is the eternal son of God, an uncreated being, the second person of the Trinity. Now, I once read a book by an eminent physicist uh, who, who purported to explain how everything could come from nothing. And of course, the reason that he was able to explain that with great claim from men like Richard Dawkins and others was that nothing isn't nothing. It's a potential of uh, possibility. And in fact, in that case, it was a quantum potential, um, quantum particles um, flicking in and out of being. But it sounds very much as though Jordan Peterson has that in mind as well, that there is some kind of um, particulate soup that, uh, that creates reality or can be used to create reality. But again, this isn't the God of the Bible. If there was something outside of God that he needed for creation, he could not be God. So therefore, Jordan Peterson's view of God is, is a diminished view of God. He's not the eternal God. He's not the omnipotent God. He's not the uh, God who made all things. And also he goes on to speak about this being connected to the image of God in man. And again, this doesn't really seem to take into account what the biblical, what the theological uh, concern about the image of God in man is, that we are created a spiritual being, that we are created for the glory of God. We're created to live entirely for him, to worship him, to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength. So that the image of God in man is um, is what empowers us and enables us to be a being who is created totally for the pleasure and the glorifying of Almighty God. And I think that Jordan Peterson's view of the image of God in man here is perhaps not well defined and falls short of that. So I want to move on to the subject of sin and the doctrine of sin. And again, my purpose here is only to show that the teaching on sin, in this case, both by Ben Shapiro and by Jordan Peterson, isn't biblical, isn't classical Christian teaching. Uh, I don't think either of them would be concerned about that. But uh, please, um, could Rich, could you now play the third clip? So this clip begins with Jordan Peterson talking about sin as being failure to uh, move towards the pinnacle. Uh, I'm not sure what he means by pinnacle. That could mean God, it could mean becoming God, or it could mean the pinnacle being your greatest potential as a human being uh, in, a, in an atheistic situation. Um, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't say that. But Shapiro to me seems to be saying that sin is failure to work towards that pinnacle. And the discussion revolves around the idea that sin is something internal, something that is less than it, uh, it should be in terms of our own personal development. It's something within. But what's lacking is a moral context. Jordan Peterson even goes as far as to talk about this kind of sin, this seemingly amoral sin, this failure to work towards the pinnacle or to work towards this highest objective is hell. And for him, hell, he says, is, um, it, it, it isn't eternal. It's not the hell of the Bible, not a place that we go to after death for eternal torment. But hell is failing to move in that direction, it's failing to have that kind of um, perfection in our lives within. Psychologically, I'm saying, because, of course, Peterson is a psychologist. And I think that when sin is discussed here, it's not discussed in a biblical sense. It's not discussed in the sense that uh, it is uh, sin is a transgression of God's commandments. Sin has moral consequences. All sin is towards God. Sin deserves judgment. Sin has to be judged, whether it's judged in ourselves or whether our sins are laid on the Lord Jesus Christ. Sin must be judged because it is sin. And hell is eternal because every sin deserves eternal damnation and hell fire. So the discussion between um, Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson isn't a discussion of the biblical doctrine of sin. Um, Peterson does mention that sin is failure to meet the mark. Uh, that is um, uh, to hit the mark. That's um, uh, hamartia in, in, in the Greek, I understand, to do with uh, archery and missing a mark. And that would be the Greek language. But the biblical doctrine of sin goes way, way deeper than that, showing us the uh, uh, the fact that, that sin is a moral problem, a moral crisis. It's something for which we are liable and for which we must be judged. 
Now, Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 reads, But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If sin was just something, just a psychological thing that occurred that we needed to worry about, um, then why would Christ die for us? If sin hadn't killed us, if sin hadn't destroyed us, ruined us, if sin hadn't condemned us to death, why would the Lord Jesus have to lay down his life in our place and become a perfect sacrifice for our sins? And the doctrine of sin is a psychology doctrine of sin, that something is a miss inside, something's wrong with us psychologically, something's caused us trauma or upset or pain or something like that. We fail to live up to our own standards and this is sin and this can be corrected by psychology. That's what I think is being said here. Now, yesterday, uh, of J July the 10th, uh, Jordan Peterson uh, on his own page on YouTube put up um, a uh, comment uh, which read as follows under the title, You Should Examine Your Actions. Then it reads, You should examine your actions when you make an error or um, deviate from what you know you should do. It produces a state of internal chaos, worry and concern. You are thrust into the unknown. What, you, what are you afraid of? What are you avoiding? What are you failing to develop? Now, this is very much a, a psychologist's view of sin. This is very much a psychologist's view of what's wrong within. And it simply helps to illustrate, uh, and Rich, if you could put that quote up, please. It simply helps to illustrate that, um, that psychology is overlaid over scripture. So we get a superficial interpretation of scripture. We get a psychological application. Again, that's what Jordan Peterson has done. I'm not um, criticizing him as somebody who has claimed to be a Christian preacher, but we shouldn't think of him as being a Christian. We shouldn't think of him as being a preacher of the gospel because he isn't. So what we're saying now is that uh, we shouldn't be um, looking to psychologists or non-Christians, unbelievers to preach the gospel. When God raises up men like Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro, or should we say in this case, in the case of uh, transgenderism, for example, uses somebody like J.K. Rowling to take a public stand. Even if we disagree with them on some things, we still thank God that these people have fought battles and fought in battles that we are fighting. But the answer can never lie with secular psychology. The answer can never lie with humanism or any of those um, ungodly, um, unbelieving systems. Um, and a belief in God is not enough either. It must be a belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. It must be a true understanding of the Bible. As we already said, we, we come to the Bible with um, an openness of heart, with humility, recognizing this is God's word. We submit ourselves to it. And as we do so, and we pray that God's Holy Spirit would teach us, then he does deal with us and he does work in our hearts and in our lives. And that's the only way to find Jesus Christ. We must come to him as sinners, as beggars seeking bread, as, as those in need of mercy. Now, we talk about these systems of psychology, which are so much fated in these days, and yet psychologists disagree on who's right, who's wrong. Um, there's a developmental um, psycho psycho psychologist, a cognitive psychologist known as Piaget, which uh, who is a man who um, is mentioned often by J, uh, Jordan Peterson, for example. But these systems, they, they, they hit the buffers. They can neither describe us accurately as we are as human beings because they don't take account of our sin, uh, and they can't lead us to eternal life because they don't take account of how sin can be dealt with. They don't understand who God is or what he's like or his holiness or the nature of man or the image of God in man. The Bible is better than any psychology textbook. It said, for example, that if we go to the Psalms, we, we will find every kind of human uh, emotion and expression of human grief and distress and trouble there, all, all work through in lifting up of the heart to God and the crying out to God and the seeking of God's mercy in those situations. And of course, God is portrayed to us as a God who cares for us, who is near at hand, who, who loves us and who does deliver us. And those of us who are here today can say, but for the Lord's mercies, we would be consumed. We're here today by the grace of God and because we have been on the receiving end of his mercies every single day. And we need to say as well as Christians that the gospel is the only way. These men can do some good. We, we, we acknowledge that. And again, we're not going to um, uh, 
think that, uh, that, that, that the work that's been done has been small or hasn't involved sacrifice on the part of these men or hasn't been good and, and hasn't accomplished good. But the only answer is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not psychology. It's not getting back to uh, conservatism, as everybody's talking about in England at this time, because Boris Johnson, the prime minister, appears to have resigned. And um, it's none of those things. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not peripheral. It's not insignificant. It's the truth. It is God's way of making us righteous. And the only way that a nation can be brought back from the brink is if people turn back to Jesus Christ. That's what we preach for. That's what we pray for. So don't be misled by the teaching of Jordan Peterson. Don't follow after it. Don't equate it with Bible teaching. Don't believe that it is, it is the answer to the situation that we're in. We need to get out and preach the gospel. We need to preach and expose sin for what it is. We need to preach up the doctrines of God because people need to know who God is. We need to preach up the Lord Jesus Christ because people need to know that they need a saviour and that Jesus Christ is that saviour and that in loving mercy and his immense and, and, and wonderful goodness towards us sinners, God sent Jesus into the world so that whosoever believeth on him shouldn't have, perish but have salvation. So Christians, this is a clarion call to not be led astray. Don't think that if a man like Jordan Peterson was saved or some other celebrity um, was saved, that that will somehow boost the cause of Christ. The Lord doesn't need celebrities. It's wonderful when a celebrity is saved because a sinner is saved and there's rejoicing in heaven. But we don't need celebrity. We need to be faithful to the word of God. We need to work for the cause of Christ. We need to look up to God. We need to pray for the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. And we need to do so until he, in his time, until God, in his time, sends and gives the increase. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. and we need, to, we need to come to the Bible and not look at it through any lens other than the lens of our own sinfulness and God's sovereignty in all things. Amen.